Hello and welcome to today's session. We'll continue to look at this uh, iconic play, Death of a Salesman. And today we will pay close attention to the opening scene, Act 1, Scene 1. So here we find that Linda and Willie are having a conversation. And we do understand that there's a certain backdrop to this conversation. And they are talking about a certain things about which there's a history, about which there is a memory. And there are also certain preconceived notions about the way uh, Willie goes about his work. Yeah. So we find that uh, when the scene opens, Willie is back from a trip, one of his sales trips, which obviously had not gone well either. So he's back and Linda is trying to engage with him with a lot of compassion, with a lot of tenderness. So this is something that we will notice especially in the first, from the first part onwards, that Linda comes across as a person who is very sensitive to others' needs. And she's also trying to engage with uh, Willie with a lot of compassion. But Willie, we find, is mostly dismissive about uh, Linda. Uh, she, he also tries to uh, cut her conversation in many ways. And there are these occasional glimpses, which we will also see towards the end of this uh, uh, scene, towards the end of the first scene, that there are these occasional instances where he suddenly... Uh, becomes very conscious about uh, Linda's compassion and tenderness towards him and tries to engage with that, tries to respond to that in more, <clears throat> uh, you know, in, in, in uh, reciprocate that in similar ways. But he's not always successful in doing that either. So when we see this, when we see the beginning of this uh, uh, play, we find that Linda is asking him, asking Willie, um, you didn't smash the car, did you? So this also gives us the sense that this is something that had happened before during his sales trips, that he had smashed the car before. Things had gone wrong in very terrible ways. Uh, but Willie also responds with a lot of irritation. He does not want to engage with that. And there's a lot of discussion in the beginning about Linda being concerned about his physical well-being, about his uh, mental well-being. And he, he also she also says that he looks terrible. And uh, he first tries to blame it on. He first tried to excuse himself out of that situation, saying maybe it was the coffee. But then suddenly he begins to open up. And here we find that Willie comes across as someone who tries to, in some form, see the reality of the situation. Uh, he's still, you know, uh, very much invested in the notion of the American dream. He's still very much invested in the life that he could have had if things had not gone wrong. But we find that Linda continues to be in denial. So that is something that gets exposed massively right at the outset of this play about how Linda continues to be in denial about their present circumstances, how Linda continues to be in denial, hoping that out of that denial, there is uh, some possibility of some uh, something nice coming out. Yeah? So uh, Willie confesses about the way he drives and what happened during his uh, um, this uh, the recent sales trip. Yeah? Suddenly, I, couldn't, uh, I suddenly couldn't drive anymore. The car kept going off onto the shoulder, you know. Oh, maybe it was a steering again. I don't think Angela knows the um, Studebaker. So there is a lot of reference here about uh, Willie's driving skills or the lack thereof and how he's unable to pay attention on, the, on driving when he's at it. And the gravity of this strikes uh, us as being... Uh, uh, the gravity of this strikes us when he is giving this detailed description, with which we will lead to, uh, read together. I was drying, driving along, you understand, and I was fine. I was even observing the scenery. You can imagine me looking at scenery on the road every week of my life. But it's so beautiful up there, Linda. The trees are so thick and the sun is warm. I open the windshield and just let the warm air bathe over me. And then all of a sudden, I'm going off the road. I'm telling you, I absolutely forgot I was driving. So this is the state of mind that Willie is in. And Linda was uh, rightfully concerned the moment he walked in, wondering whether he had smashed the car again. If I'd have gone the other way over the white line, I might have killed somebody. So I went on again. And five minutes later, I'm dreaming again. So he's dreaming in the middle of driving. And we also know that there is a sense of nostalgia which is dominating every single of his thoughts. He is dreaming about. He is looking at the scenery. He's having nostalgic thoughts. And he, is, uh, he, he realizes later on that he's dreaming again. And I nearly... He presses two fingers against his eyes. I have such thoughts. I have such strange thoughts. This is a condition that Willie is strangely aware of, that he does tend to 
uh, switch off in the middle of things. Even when he's driving, right in the middle of it, his mind is drifting off to a number of other things. So that's another dominant theme that is setting the stone. So that that's another dominant uh, theme that is setting the tone for the rest of this uh, play. There is a sense of nostalgia about the past. There is always the sense of, you know, how things could have uh, been better. And that sense of loss that Willie uh, experiences and the state of denial that uh, Linda is in, it together leads the family to a very helpless situation from which halfway through the play we realize that there is not much that uh, uh, in anyone can uh, rescue. There is not much that could be uh, uh, salvaged. We also get a sense of the nature of his work and he realized that we realize that he's a 60 year old man who isn't doing very well in his job and he also has these thoughts about perhaps he could have uh, uh, done better in uh, New England and he thinks of himself as a New England man and how they don't need how his supervisors, how his bosses do not need him in New York, how it is a more or less, uh, you know, a very territorial thing that he could have performed better in another setting. Yeah. And um, Linda tries to sympathize with him as much as possible saying perhaps, you know, he is too accommodating too. And, and we find that uh, Linda is in fact trying to make things easier for him emotionally. But at the same time, she is in a state of denial about how the reality of things are. And at the same time, uh, Willie, Willie is forever, while he is acutely conscious about his limitations, acutely conscious about the things that are going wrong, even to the extent of looking back and realizing that he was daydreaming while he was supposed to be concentrating on his driving, he also uh, genuinely believes that things could have been better if it were the other way around, if he were out of New York, things could have been better if a certain other person were in charge. Things could have been better if he were in a different location. So these thoughts always dominate him. This longing for something that he hoped that he would have when he started investing in the American dream. And this disillusionment comes out in many forms. It even becomes very pathological as you would see. He is a person who is in, uh, mentally, emotionally and physically weak at the beginning of this play and there is very little that the uh, societal circumstances or the family circumstances could do to make things better for him. So um, we are also introduced to the two boys they have, two sons, Happy and Biff and the way they talk about Happy and Biff are as if they are still very small kids. Yeah. So Linda becomes more accommodating when they are talking about the kids trying to defend both their sons to, uh, to whatever extent possible. But uh, uh, we, we find that, you know, Willie is uh, uh, in a dilemma in that he's concerned that his sons are not really making it big in, this, uh, in their work, in their career, in their life. But he also wants to sympathize with them in a way that that will not um, uh, uh, that will not affect them. Yeah. So they're having a conversation about uh, Happy and Biff, the two sons. So um, Willie is also concerned, we realized at this point, that there is a home, there's a house that he has worked for and the children are not there to the, spend time with them effectively and productively. So we realized, you know, one of the sons, he's trying to make a living away in Texas which is quite away from the urban settings that uh, where Willie wanted to build a life. He's trying his uh, uh, hand at a farming, which uh, Willie does not really approve of. Yeah, So um, they, they, uh, they're having this conversation about their sons and linking it up with how certain people will eventually make it and certain others don't. Some people some people accomplish something. Yeah, So there is this constant sense of loss, nostalgia in uh, Willie's uh, um, almost everything that Willie articulates and this dissolution when he projects uh, this failure, this dissolution and everything onto his sons too. So we get to know from the way the conversation is progressing over here that just before he left for his uh, uh, the latest uh, sales trip, he had lost his temper that he had become severely critical of uh, Biff of which uh, Linda is uh, 
uh, disapproving as well. So, um, Willie also wants to know whether after he walked out, um, you know, with this uh, terrible temper, feeling disappointed with Biff, he also wants to know whether Biff had bothered to apologize, had bothered to discuss about that. So, we find that um, at, the, at the core of this family is, uh, you know, two people, Linda and uh, uh, Willie, who are trying to make things work, yeah, but there are also a number of things around them, including the lives and futures of their sons, which are not really adding up to the life that they have envisaged. Yeah, so this crisis is always there. The sense of loss, the sense of denial is always there, uh, overshadowing their um, them, their life in multiple ways. So this is uh, what Willie feels about Biff's choice of what he wants to do uh, in life. How can he find himself on a farm? Is that a life? A farmhand? In the beginning when he was young, I thought, well, a young man, it's good for him to tramp around, take a lot of different jobs, but it's more than 10 years now and he has yet to make $35 a week. So this is a real concern about Biff not making it uh, big in life. He's not even into some steady livelihood and we get to know that Biff is 34 years old and uh, Willie's career is also coming to an end. So the concern is very real. It's not just an emotional crisis. It's not just a, uh, you know, a, a phase of this disillusionment that Willie is going through the crisis. It's very real because there's very little money coming in too. And this he finds, Willie at some level finds this very strange because America is a land of dreams. That's a place where a young man can experiment and find his way around and eventually become successful. He also has a number of uh, these success models and success stories around him to show that this is indeed possible, but at the same time, it does not seem to be working. That model is not uh, working well for his own sons. And Biff, uh, Willie makes the statement that Biff is a lazy bum. Yeah, here is when we begin to see that. Uh, along with this denial that um, Linda uh, Linda has and the disillusionment that uh, Willie faces almost on a daily basis, the disillusionment that he experiences and something that he's projecting on his uh, family too. Along with this denial and disillusionment, there is also a sense of contradiction in what they feel and what they experience. And what makes this more tragic, what makes this uh, uh, situation very grave is that all of these feelings are very real, very genuine. So there is in this one instance where Willie feels that Biff is a lazy bum, yeah, and Linda is uh, getting a bit defensive about that, trying to say that he's just lost and he's not really uh, lazy. And she also wants to steer clear of the discussion. She tries to distract Willie from perhaps even calling a spade a spade and because that's also very very discomforting it's unsettling at many levels uh, when you begin to identify when one begins to identify their children as failures as for being lazy but um in in, in less than a few seconds we find uh, Biff making this statement almost assuring himself if not anything else Biff Lohman is lost in the greatest country in the world, a young man with such personal attractiveness gets lost and such a hard worker. There's one thing about Biff, he's not lazy. So we find that barely a couple of, uh, uh, barely like a few seconds had passed between when Willie says Biff is a lazy bum and he's saying he's such a hard worker and he's not lazy. This contradiction is also built into the play. So the sense of denial, the sense of disillusionment, and this uh, uh, contradiction is continually built into this play. And there is this continual play between order and disorder. We find that the play from the beginning, from the scene one, from the time the tone of the play is set, the stage setting happens, we find that there is this continual oscillation between order and disorder. At some level, there is a family, there are a set of individuals who are trying to bring in some order, but the way they navigate through this is through complete chaos. Yeah, Things do not seem to fall into place and that becomes a, a, a worry, almost descending into a pathological condition. So um, here again, you know, Willie, we find him continually thinking of a past which could have taken a different direction altogether, a more positive, a more promising, a more successful side. So this is how he's uh, talking about Biff. I'll get him a job selling. He could be big in no time. My God, remember how they used to follow him around in high school when he smiled at one of them, their faces lit up. When he walked down the street, he loses himself in reminiscences. Yeah. 
So the space between denial and disillusionment is very significant over here. So we find that we do not know whether uh, William's recollections are for real or whether he's going a bit overboard with his imagination, trying to uh, think about a past where Biff had the potential to be successful, where Biff was very attractive, where Biff was uh, being followed around in high school because he was really, the others used to look up to him, whether he showed the potential to come up as very successful in life, you know, very influential in life, you know, where he exhibited leadership qualities. We do not know whether these are the qualities that uh, Willie Lohman is projecting to his son, whether he is seeing, a, uh, a, whether the seeing in Biff the, the ideal qualities that he wishes that he had uh, uh, possessed or whether you know he's really reminiscing uh, reminiscing because we get to know from the beginning that he's into this habit of daydreaming even if it's in the middle of uh, uh, driving yeah so we need to take this uh, into account whenever we come across Bill uh, thinking about the past sometimes lamenting about the loss sometimes uh, wondering about the possibilities that could have uh, emerged so Linda here tries to distract him from the domestic uh, affairs and she's trying to talk about something very innocuous, something possibly she thinks is very neutral. She's talking about a new kind of American type cheese that she got today, whipped cheese that she got. And immediately that sets another trigger in Willie. Here uh, Willie Lohman comes across as a person who's waiting for a trigger to just explode. He can lose, he could lose his temper for, uh, for no reason. He could even, uh, you know, uh, make a mountain uh, out of uh, uh, nothing. We find that here, Linda is very kindly suggesting, kindly uh, saying that she tried to get some new kind of cheese, trying to bring in some domestic conversation over there, distracting him from the other less unpleasant things. We find that that does not go down very well either. So she, he immediately says he wanted Swiss cheese and why he feels that he's always being contradicted. Uh, he, he feels that he's always being contradicted at uh, home. Um, so, um, Linda, we realize from her responses and uh, uh, the, the stage uh, directions that we find within brackets with a covering laugh, yeah, Linda, uh, from her responses, we realize that she's used to these situations and she is also dealing with them quite well. She knows how to manage him emotionally and how to control the situation. <clears throat> And she also knows how to control the situation at home without things going overboard. And um, next, uh, right after that, by we, we find that you know Willie now is expressing his discontentment over um, the the apartment life that he is experiencing over there, uh, which is in, in uh, which is also gives a contrasting image to the scenery that he was describing at the beginning, the scenery that led him to daydream uh, when he was driving. So he feels that, you know, the way they boxed us in here, bricks and windows, windows and bricks. Yeah. So there is again some uh, wishful thinking about, you know, thinking about some land that they could have uh, bought. Yeah. And uh, uh, we find that uh, uh, we, we, we find him really complaining increasingly about this growing urbanization, about the life, the boxed lives that they have in this apartment in this big city. The street is lined with cars. There's not a breath of fresh air in the neighborhood. The grass don't grow anymore. You can't raise a carrot in the backyard. They should have had a law against apartment houses. Remember those two beautiful elm trees out there when I and Biff hung the swing between them? So he is someone who is stuck in the past. Yeah? So there is a discourse of denial, disillusionment and contradiction which sets the tone for the rest of the play. And we find that he is constantly trying to access a past which is no longer accessible to him. He is constantly lamenting something that he no longer has access to. And we realize that once Willie Lohman gets into this mode of complaining, there's no way to stop him. He starts by complaining about the American uh, uh, cheese that uh, Linda got instead of the Swiss type, which he thinks he likes more. From there, he talks about, he complains about the apartment houses, that apartment culture, the, 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 the growing urbanization, and about how things are very, very, very um, congested in the city. And then he, um, uh, you know, very briefly, he, again gets into that mode of nostalgia 
thinking about the, the kind of uh, uh, plants and the flowers and the fragrance that he was uh, he could otherwise uh, have experienced and then he begins to complain about the population how it is getting out of control yeah so we find that here here is a person who is trying to make sense of his life yeah who always wanted his life always hoped that his life would be a massive success who's continuing to wish the same for his sons and nothing seems to be under his control things seem to be the, the the country is growing the city is growing there seem to be a lot of opportunities there are a lot of success stories all around but he begins to experience that he also begins to feel that his entry into this american uh, dream his in, uh, you know dream of making it big is also falling flat in multiple ways yeah. um <clears throat> So towards the uh, end of this uh, scene, we also find this very brief moment where he uh, realizes that he's not been very kind to Linda and uh, asks her with guilt, turning to Linda guiltily, you're not worried about me, are you a sweetheart? What's the matter? So in between we find, you know, Happy is trying to interfere with a listen, but he's not responded to. And Linda um, articulates what she has in mind that, you know, uh, you've got too much on the ball to worry about. And this is a real worry and real concern that Linda has throughout this play, despite the state of denial that she is in about uh, her husband, about her family, about the lives that they are stuck in, about their sons and their future. She realizes that there is too much that Willie is worrying about. And she is um, quite rightfully uh, worried about him, concerned about him, given the way the uh, story began, given the way uh, the, the the play began, you know, with uh, Willie Loman confessing that he started dreaming in the middle of driving, that he could have smashed his car uh, into something, he could have got killed. So Linda at some level is worrying for his life itself. Yeah? So Willie also uh, realizes very briefly here that you're my foundation and my support. Yeah, And he is also trying to uh, make peace, to, trying to uh, come to terms with the reality that he, it is around him and he's saying how he would want to allow Biff to go to Texas, to go back to Texas if that's what he wants. And again, you know, there is this exaggerated hope, this exaggerated, uh, uh, you know, wait for the kind of success. Again, there is this hope about this humongous uh, uh, success that the American society, the American dream seems to be promising to its citizens. So Willie feels that certain men just don't get started till later in life, like Thomas Edison. Yeah. So this is the kind of success story on which he has built his dream, on which he thinks his sons, his family will find a name, a future. We'll also quickly uh, begin to wrap up with this uh, moment of realization that Willie has, which also shows to us, to the reader, to the uh, viewers, the extent of the emotional uh, stress that uh, he is facing. Um, Willie realizes with, a, with, with some uh, uh, discomfort and perhaps shock that he thought that he was driving a uh, Chevy while he was actually driving a uh, Studebaker. Yeah. So this is something which tells us a lot about the character, the concern, the growing concern in the family and the real possibility that maybe he is going through some emotional derangement. I was thinking of the Chevy. 1928 when I had that red Chevy that funny I could have sworn I was driving that Chevy today so he's totally out of his senses at multiple time slots during a day he's driving he's enjoying the scenery and he's daydreaming and he lock uh, he loses track of time he loses track of the road itself and now he realizes that all throughout the day he thought he was actually driving the Chevy when he was not yeah so Linda is trying to be very supportive over here and she does not try to panic she is not panicking at all she tries to maintain her cool throughout and she talks but she tells perhaps you know uh, something must have reminded him of the Chevy and you know nothing has really gone wrong and Willie again drifts back into this mode of nostalgia into this mode of thinking about a certain past to which he has no more access to remarkable remember those days the way they refused to simonize that car the dealer refused to believe there was 80,000 miles on it close your eyes I'll be right up yeah so and here is we find that the, the, the son's talking, Happy is telling Biff, Jesus, maybe he smashed up the car again. So we know that this is how the 
a routine conversation goes in this house with the family waiting with this real possibility of uh, Willie Lohman out there and smashing up his car against something over and again. And this concern, this real worry, coupled with the sense of denial, the sense of disillusionment and the contradiction that this family is facing, sometimes, you know, Willie Lohman contradicting himself and sometimes the family members contradicting each other and sometimes the storyline itself, the plot line itself, constantly reminding of the contradictory existence that they have within that uh, ecosystem. There is this possibility of American dream. There is this possibility of this huge dream, this possibility of living out this dream, which was projected onto their lives from a very, uh, uh, from times very early on, and now this contradicting reality of uh, not being able to live up to it. So we find that the, the first scene is very packed with all of these emotions, all of these experiences, almost simultaneously, thus setting the tone of this uh, our play in multiple ways. And we do realize that memory plays a very big role in um, shaping these characters. The way we understand these characters are also heavily mediated by their own memories. And at some point, we begin to wonder whether Willie's uh, memories, the, his recollections, what he reminiscences are actually uh, real or not, whether it is an imagined past that he has in mind or whether uh, uh, something really happened or is it just, you know, the, the family trying to project onto each other their wishes, their disillusionment, and the crisis and the dilemma that they are going through at that point. So with this, we begin to wrap up for the day. We'll continue to um, look at the play in the next uh, few sessions. I thank you for your time and I look forward to seeing you again.